Hi there, I'm Gary, welcome to my channel. Welcome back if you've been here before. This is Figure Friday. Now today I thought I'd talk about how to do bases on small war games figures. As an example, I'm using some Napoleonic era riflemen from 95th Rifles in skirmish order. Now I'll have a quick chat about the figures, show you how I painted them, then show you how I did the bases. Now all of this will come as chapters so you can hop backwards and forwards as your heart desires. Now remember please if you've enjoyed the video do remember to subscribe to the channel. You can do that by clicking the small logo there in the bottom right corner. You can also support future productions by visiting Patreon and Buy Me A Coffee. Links to those are in the information box below. So let's get on and have a look at these lovely rifle figures. The rifles were an elite force of infantry in the British Army, founded in 1800 as the experimental corps of riflemen, later taken into the line as the 95th Regiment. They were armed with the Baker rifle, which fired a ball that was wrapped in a leather patch to grip the spiral rifling of the gun barrel. This imparted spin on the ball as it was fired, which gave accuracy out to 200 metres or more, far better than the 50 or so metres a smooth-bore musket could give. The riflemen operated as skirmishers on the battlefield in loose formations ahead of the main battle line, using their accuracy to target officers, sergeants and drummers in the enemy ranks. I'm using 18mm figures today, so at a figure ratio of 1 to 20, a company of riflemen is 4 or 5 figures, and I'm going to use 4. These are AB figures, as designed by Tony Barton, and supplied through Eureka Miniatures. The first two figures here are lying prone. This one is aiming with his rifle, resting on his backpack. The next figure appears to be checking his lock before aiming to fire. There's also a figure advancing as if running to the next firing position. And the last figure is standing to fire. All of these are really well designed. Tony has included a draping sling here, a small powder horn, and the long sheath of the sword bayonet carried by riflemen. Onto the paint, and I'm starting with a black primer today. Then I'll brush some green over the top. I'm using a brighter green than you might imagine, as that will actually look better at this scale when seen on a table. The cuffs, collars and shoulder straps are black with white piping, and all the leather work is black. You might think these troops will look a bit dull, but just you wait. I'll touch up the hats and packs as well. Then a quick touch of mahogany for the hair, and also for the stocks of the rifles. Now each soldier had a linen bag like this one. You can also pick out the straps for this one over one shoulder. The water bottle, as with all British regiments, was blue, although in the rifles the strap was still black. There was a grey blanket roll on the top of the pack as well. Next I'm adding the flesh to the figures on the faces and the hands. Then a bit I really don't like very much, piping. At least it's white, so it's not too difficult to make it very visible. Yellow would be a nightmare. When the packs are dry, I can add black leather straps to them. The buckles I'll pick out with some brass later on. Next, a bit of cavalry brown to pick out the powder horns. Then where you can see anything of their front, add some silver for their buttons. I'm also using silver to pick out their cap badges. On to the actual rifles now, and I'm adding a stripe of gun metal along the top for the barrel. 
Then I'll use some steel to pick out the locks with the hammer and the pan. Also the mounting for the bayonet near the muzzle. With some brass I'll pick out the barrel band just behind that muzzle where the sling is anchored. I'll also use the brass to pick out the handle of the sword bayonet and the tip of the sheath. Finally, green on the shako cords and the light infantry plumes. The painting is done. On to the bases then, and I've cut some 25 by 25 millimeter squares for my skirmish base, two figures per base. I'm just gonna round off the corners as I think these look better for skirmish bases. Then I'll rough the surface with some 120 grit paper. It makes it easier for the glue and the texture to stick. So then I can fix the figures to the base and I'm going to use a two part epoxy for this and I'll wait a little while for that to set fully, maybe a sort of 15, 20 minutes. When it has set I can start to add my base texture. This comes in a pot and it's pre-mixed and ready to use. It's a bit like a sort of acrylic version of plaster and there are lots of varieties of colour available. I use a toothpick or a cocktail stick to add it roughly at first. Be, be quite generous with it now. Because then you can use a wet brush to coax the texture into place. It moves very easily and as it's acrylic based you can wash the brush out in water. And before the texture dries, I'm going to put in these little rocks as well. Well, they're actually chopped up bits of cork waste, but they look good enough at this scale. I'm also going to add this big tuft of grass. These come on sheets pre-cut. If any of the texture gets on it, you can just clean it off with a wet brush again. Now, once the texture's dried, and it takes you know, about an hour, I can add a touch of toning powder to vary the hue of the soil a bit and take a little bit of the shine off. Just adds a little something. Then finally I'm going to put in a few small tufts of grass, maybe up by where the rocks are. A couple of little dabs of white PVA glue, then push on some 2mm flock. Don't drench the base with it as some will stick to all of the texture and you'll lose the open ground effect. Then finally brush a few pale grey highlights onto the rocks to bring them out a little bit and that's that. Now you know none of these techniques are particularly difficult, they just need the right stuff and a little bit of patience. I think the results are well worth it. So there we go, a uh, company of riflemen done and a tutorial on bases as well, win-win situation. Now, if you've enjoyed today's show, and I really hope you have, then please do remember to subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. The link is in the bottom right corner there. Just click on the logo. In any case, do keep coming back for Figure Fridays every Friday. Do also check out our weekly news show on Monday, Monday Matters. And I will see you next time. Thanks very much for watching.